do a demonstration here of how to submit data to the Math Genealogy Project. This video is going to focus on adding new data. We go to our Submit Data page and there's some information here. You've probably been here because you found this video tutorial. Uh, the first thing I'll talk about in this video is the distinction between new data and updates. New data refers to adding someone to the database, including the student of an existing mathematician in the database, because the linkage to that advisors page will be automatic. So you're not requesting to add someone to the list of students of an individual. You're asking to add someone to the database, and then automatically they will also appear amongst the list of students. Before we go to the new data form, though, we want to go do two things. I won't do the first right now, but make sure the person isn't in the database. Search for their name. Don't just go to their advisors page because they might not be actually correctly linked to their advisor and you might need to just do an update. So search for the name and check that that name is not in the database. So that helps us avoid duplicates. Assuming that the individual is not in the database, we need their advisor's ID number as well. So let's just for today use Carl Gauss as our advisor. So I've put Gauss in here, done a search, um, and I'm going to scroll down here to the bottom. And it says, to submit students of this mathematician, please use the new data form, noting this mathematician's MGP ID of 18231 for the advisor ID. So I'm going to copy that. And then I'll go over to the new data form. And before I forget that I have things on the clipboard, let me go put the advisor information in here, just like that. If this individual had more than one advisor, you could click add advisor and put in a second one or a third one and so on. I'm going to remove that advisor from here. And Submitter information, this is your contact information. This is so that we can figure out who's submitting this data. Note that we don't make any inferences about the information later on the page based on who the submitter is. So you can't leave anything else blank. So I'll just put myself in. and my email address. Now you're going to put in the name of the student. If the individual has papers listed in MathSignet, you can also put their MathSignet ID in here. There's a separate video tutorial focused just on locating MathSignet IDs, so you might want to pull that up and watch that as well. Uh, degree type here, we've listed the most common degree types of the doctoral degrees that we record, so I'm just going to pick PhD, pick the appropriate one. If it's not listed here, just use other and specify it. And let's say that this happened in 2022. Um, and we need a thesis title. And we can put LaTeX code in here. Uh, just between dollar signs or uh, backslash parenthesis like you normally would. Please only use LaTeX code for mathematical expressions. If there are, say, accented characters in a name or you're supplying a thesis title in a language other than English, just use the characters as appropriate. So if Arthur Great Theorem, uh, actually, if his name started with an umlauted A, I could just type it that way uh, or copy and paste if you uh, aren't able to type those things on your keyboard. Our search engine will allow, just as when I searched for Gauss, I typed it with a double S and it returned the result with the S set in it. Um, so if you want to present things using proper uh, diacritical marks in the individual's native language, either for the uh, their name or their um, thesis title, 
please just do that. If you supply us with LaTeX code for how to make accents or diacritical marks, we can't always get that done correctly. So it's best if you just supply the name in Unicode. Math subject classification can be left blank. Let's say this looks like it's probably something in number theory. School name, uh, University of Nowhere. If you want to supply a reference for us to, to look up, um, you can do that. Um, and if there's any comments you want to give us, you can add those comments here if you think they'll be helpful for us in processing your data. Okay, we then click the submit button. Now you have a chance to proofread the information here and double check that it's correct. If you think that there's an issue with it, you can click the edit button and it will take you back and let you make corrections. You found a typo, something like that. Um, and then you'll just click submit and it will give you a confirmation screen and send you a confirmation email. I'm not actually going to click the submit button. If you've got that confirmation email, that's your guarantee that we have received your data. Uh, the last comment I'll make before ending this video is this advisor ID. Remember, this is the Math Genealogy Project ID, and we found Gauss's MGP ID on the bottom of his genealogy page. This is not a Math Signet ID. So we get some issues when individuals submit Math Signet IDs here. If we're processing data quickly, we don't realize that it's not an MGP ID. That's one of our most common ways errors get introduced. So please pay attention to making sure you get the MGP ID. If the individual isn't yet in the database and you're going to submit their information as well, it's completely fine to leave that advisor ID blank. Um, and then we will either create a page for the advisor or look up the advisor and link to the right one. If there's more than one, say you put John Smith as the advisor and we can't tell which John Smith it should be, that's where having your email address is useful. It'll allow us to contact you and ask follow-up questions. We don't share that email address with anyone and we will only ever use it to contact you with questions about data that you submit to us.